Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal News Show. Joining you every morning at 8 a.m. UK time. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, as always, for joining me and making this a part of your morning routines. It is very much appreciated. Um, do drop a like, subscribe, all that youtube stuff. I really appreciate your time. Uh, if you could uh, jump into the chat box every morning and, and join us, it is also very much appreciated. Just like these people here, good morning uh, to those that have jumped on. Uh, Phil, we've got Black Shine, Jimbo, Damien, Rob Paul, Red Star, Pika Who. Uh, we've got uh, Darren, Sabre, Jose, Mr. Ree Ray. Uh, I think that YouTube has probably mugged people off and the likes of Matt G, et cetera, are in here. Marcus, I see, Trevor, Arsenal Adventure. Um Jimbo, Tom, Stephen, uh, lots of usual faces. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. And uh, we've got uh, Pico, who's been a member now for three months. Fantastic. Gunner kind of Dude's been a member for uh, six months as well. Fantastic dedication. Thank you for the support on the channel. And thank you for all the kind comments that you left on yesterday's video. That was, yeah, very humbling. Um, I know we opened up a lot yesterday and it was very personal. Um, but uh, yeah, it was very much appreciated all the kind comments that you left on yesterday's video. I read through as many of them as replied to as many of them as I could. Um, so yeah, but thank you guys for uh, tuning in always and continuing to be part of this. Uh, Bakary Lasagna, been a member now for 10 months. Amazing. And King Cobra Kai, StreamYard mugged you off. Sad days, sad days. Uh, let's get on with today's stories. If you're new to the channel, new to the show, we run this in two parts. We tackle the news in the first half and then we tackle your questions in the second. So uh, Arsenal linked Eduardo Camavinga. You may remember we discussed the French international's links to Arsenal and the supposed interest from the club that never really materialised into anything more than just interest. Well, I wouldn't expect to see any news regarding the French international and Arsenal anytime soon because he has agreed a brand new contract with Los Blancos and there is an expectation that he will indeed be with the club for the foreseeable future. So no Eduardo Camavinga at Arsenal. However, I think Arsenal fans will be very happy that they've got their own star-studded lineup of midfielders, of course, headed up by the one, the only Declan Rice. And Arsenal would have needed to spend a huge amount of money to get Camavinga, but Arsenal ended up investing in who I feel is by far a better player in Declan Rice. Some other Arsenal-related news, and Socrates uh, Papas Patopoulos uh, is expected to potentially be on his way to join Hector Bellerin uh, at Real Betis on a free transfer. Mark Bartra's injury is being reacted to by the Spanish club, and the former Arsenal defender could be joining uh, his former teammates uh, in Seville uh, at Real Betis. So very interesting to see if this deal materialise into something. You can tell it's the international break, can't you, with uh, the stories that we're discussing. But I thought it was an interesting bit of news reported initially by Fabrizio Romano. Um, Arsenal and their success with Ethan Nuanieri. Again, talking about Fabrizio Romano. He spoke yesterday uh, on his court offside sub stack about the uh, Arsenal youngster and spoke in depth about kind of the success that Arsenal had in keeping the player at the club. He is the youngest ever participant in the Premier League at the age of 15, <laughs> believe it or not. It's kind of incredible, but his rise has only continued. His star has only shone brighter ever since that moment, and Arsenal managed to secure that deal with Nuaneri. Uh, Fab said that Ethan is continuing to perform at a fantastic level in Arsenal's academy, having become the Premier League's youngest player of all time last season and having been involved in an intriguing transfer saga over the summer. It was not easy for Arsenal because three top clubs were trying to tempt Nuaneri into leaving the club with important contract proposals. They were close to losing Nuaneri almost for free with just compensation for the teenager. But in the end, they were able to extend his contract and prepare a contract for the future. This means Nuaneri's first professional contract as an Arsenal player is already on the table and Arsenal want to continue to protect their academy talents as it's served them so well in recent times with the likes of Saka, and Ketia, Smith Rowe, Nelson, etc., developing into important first team players. Um, and from my understanding, Arsenal, you know, Nuneri was always leaning towards staying with the club that, of course, he has, you know, developed and has been a key part of his life for such a long period of time. And, you know, even though there was admittedly interest from the likes of Liverpool and Manchester City and Chelsea, it never, it never really looked from at least internally, that Nuaneri would choose any other pathway other 
than Arsenal and Arsenal securing his future and hopefully will once again, once he's old enough to sign a pro contract with the club, um, will indeed get that pro contract, just like Miles Lewis Skelly has recently signed a pro contract with the club. So really positive news for Ethan Neneri and his future at the club. Now, moving into our last couple of stories, according to ESPN, Barcelona are keen on trying to sign Jorginho in the January transfer window. The Italian international, of course, has been playing in a limited capacity at Arsenal, but did start their game against Man City at the weekend. I really like Jorginho. I really think he's been one of the savviest moves we've made in the market. There was a lot of hysteria, I suppose, when we signed him. And I remember doing shows in that January window of last season in which a lot of people were very upset that Jorginho was the player that we would be going after. I think the initial shock of losing uh, the Caicedo stuff and going from 70 to 80 million pound bids to signing Jorginho was a big blow, I think, to the confidence of supporters. But I think we can all agree that Jorginho has been a very astute piece of business uh, for us and to add the depth in the defensive midfield area has been really key. Yes, he made that mistake in the derby and we're all well aware that it was an error that in the worst possible situation was never going to leave him in good stead. But, you know, players make mistakes. Players do make errors. It just happened to be that that one was a terrible moment <laughs> and could not have been at a worse moment. But he had a really good game, I thought, against Man City until Thomas Partey came in and took over. And uh, he will continue to provide really solid depth for us. And uh, captain the side as well uh, for the game against Brentford in the League Cup. It's worth remembering that. We've got a bit of a leader in there. So I don't think there's any real benefit to allowing Barcelona to, to sign him in January. Arsenal do have an option to extend his contract by another season at the end of this one. So we'll have to wait and see if Arsenal intend to do that. But lastly, Arsenal are leading the race for Jamie Bino Gittens, uh, who is a player 19 year old winger for Borussia Dortmund. This report comes from Germany and builds out there in uh, Deutschland. And uh, the German, well, I mean, I say this, he's a very interesting player. The, the German team have had uh, kind of a lot of success with young English talents. Uh, and Jamie's got um, experience playing for England's youth sides from under 15 level all the way up to the under 21s. He's got uh, one cap from the under 21 so far. And it is said that Arsenal are leading the race to try and sign the player. In terms of positioning, he is more of a left winger who is right footed than a right winger that's left footed, like we've wanted uh, in, the, in the case of Pedro Neto. But he's an exciting young player. He is getting minutes in the Bundesliga and also. In the Champions League, he came off the bench in both their game against PSG and AC Milan. Uh, a very difficult group of Borussia Dortmund got with Milan, PSG and, of course, Newcastle United as well. It's going to be very difficult to see Dortmund getting out of that group now. Um, but it is a very interesting link and certainly Arsenal will be looking to try and, I think, strengthen their options. If you consider the fact that Leandro Trossard, of course, is you know, in his late 20s, and Arsenal will want to future-proof the depth in that position. Some people might say that we should be looking to invest that time into Reese Nelson, and to an extent, I would agree, for now, we should be looking to uh, invest time in Reese Nelson. But having signed Nelson up to a brand-new deal, there are Arsenal aren't under any pressure uh, with his profile, and could even look to, to move him on to get a significant fee for him in a future transfer window. So I don't mind Arsenal looking to try and future-proof things, and certainly looking to... Uh, succeed in that case. Right, let's move to part two then and your questions right after this. Okay, part two. Uh, as I said at the start of the show, please do Drop a like if you haven't done so already. It takes you just a second and it really does help us out here. Thank you for all the support you showed on yesterday's show. It means the absolute world. Um, but yes, I really appreciate everybody that has tuned in to the show today. And if you are going to tune in for the rest of the international break, that is also very much appreciated. Um, so yeah, let's let's wait and see what Arsenal will do in January window. And you can be sure that we're bringing you plenty of coverage throughout the course or leading up to we do our Arsenal transfer show a month before the windows open. So at the start of December, the Arsenal transfer show will resume. But until that point, our 8 a.m. news shows will continue. Right. Let's go into the chat. Uh, King Cobra Christ says, what do you think of Santiago Jimenez as a number nine? We've talked about him a little bit before on the channel. Really exciting young player coming through in the fire nord side. Um, a player to keep an eye on, a, a player to monitor, I think. But uh, let's wait until the summer for players like Jimenez, who, you know, like uh, Benjamin Sesco as well. There's a group of young players, young strikers, 
coming through at the moment and we need to keep an eye on that as well. Uh, let's go to Leslie who says, I swear they missed out. I know I've read articles on it. Crazy. I'm assuming this is regarding Ghana and the African Cup of Nations. Um, I've just done a quick Google on that. Um, Angola, Ghana and Tanzania have all booked their spots at the final was the first article that came up when I searched it. So I believe Ghana are indeed involved in the African Cup of Nations this summer. Um, so yes, Partey will be involved in some way, shape or form. Um, let's go to the process that says, Tom, what advice would you give to someone who wanted to create an Arsenal related uh, YouTube channel much like yourself? Keep up your good work. I mean, the best advice I can say is to just do it. First of all, you're never going to start anything until you start it yourself. You just got to jump in there and do it as best you can. You know, I obviously had the benefit of, of, you know, I was a guest on this channel back in 2015 and then took it on in 2016. But we've also started channels uh, like the Arsenal way, myself, Bailey, Chris, Umar, um, and uh, and plenty more uh, of our team over there. We had people that have, have joined and have since left, you know, Gina, um, of course, Bailey and Chris moved on and now we've got people like Charlie helping us out on the Arsenal way. But we started that channel from from scratch. And I know a lot of you guys helped um, to, to start kicking things off there as well. And now we're nearly 100,000 subscribers over on the Arsenal way, which is kind of crazy, really, in the space of two years. But um, I think that it's a case of just doing it, mate. You just got to jump into that. Uh, if you want to call it the process, call it the process, um, but just jump into things, uh, try and find your niche. You've got to try and find them to do something that people aren't doing. You know, for me, uh, even though the channel was, uh, you know, fairly well known at the point before we did these 8am shows, the 8am show has become a bit of a niche uh, for us. Um, and I think that certainly we're in a position where, you know, we've got an amazing community that we've helped to build and cultivated together and have grown together so you know you got to find your, your calling your niche and what you like doing the most um let's go to lucas who says i'm related to today's topic but should the pgmol be penalized instead of referees being suspended for three weeks should we have a referee promotion like league table to discourage incompetence i think that you know promoting um Promoting accountability is always got to be the way forwards, Lucas, for the PGMOL. How do you penalise the PGMOL? Like how, what would be the sanction for them? I think that the referee promotion league table is a great idea in regards to uh, promoting referees that are doing well at a lower level that might not get an immediate chance straight away and to hold referees accountable for their mistakes at the top level. What I would say is that there is also an element of you can promote accountability, but would the added pressure of that accountability promote more mistakes? I don't know. I, it's impossible to know until it's trial, but that's certainly something that you would need to, to consider. Um, G-Dog says, why are the referees not investigating the referees, especially when people like Howard Webb come out and contradict themselves all over the place? A referee, the game, for goodness sake. Um, I, investigations into referees, I'm not sure what we've seen is going to start an investigation. The only thing that needs to be done is a full-on overview and scrutiny of the refereeing system. Not over, not only kind of an overview of the refereeing system, but the process in which by referees reach the level that they do. Why is it such a specific group of people that are the referees in the Premier League? Why is there not a broader, diverse range of opportunities being given um, because surely if we do that and we diversify and we open up the, the the spectrum of people that are allowed into the, not allowed, but certainly given the opportunity to, to referee, surely we will find the better referees from a larger pool of people. So, yes, let's let's wait and see what happens. But I hope that we see it. Uh, Pony says, are you going to be doing a loan watch this international break? Probably not because I'm going on holiday this weekend, so I doubt I'm going to have the time. But we'll be covering... Uh, players as and when they pop up on our radar that are on loan as well. Uh, Chin Ho says, is Socrates without a club at the moment? I believe he is, yes. Uh, I think Socrates is a free agent. Uh, yes, he is right now. He's 35 years of age, is worth pointing out. And that's why he's he might be able to sign for Real Betis. It's a bit like Andros Townsend, who's just signed for Luton Town, actually, if you've not currently caught that as well. Um, Rob Bob says, what are your thoughts on us selling Balogun? Now he's over one goal in two games. We definitely need to spend on a striker. I can't say that Balogun's 
you know, forays at Monaco have particularly caught my eye. Like, it's not been talked about. It's not really been brought up. He's got three goals and assists in five games so far. Um, I know that certainly I think one of those was a penalty, I think. Uh, I don't know how many of them are penalties. I know one of them definitely isn't. He's got a great goal against Lorient. Um, I think it was. Um, but uh, I don't know how many of the others are and if have been penalties. I think one of them was a penalty. But uh, I personally have not been missing Balogun. You know, I don't think it was a mistake to sell him. I think Arsenal, um, he also missed two penalties as well. It's worth pointing out. Um, I think that, you know, it's a good bit of business by Arsenal. We want him to do well because if he does well, Arsenal will have more of those options activated in his deal. And then another club might come along to try and buy him in the future. And Arsenal have got a significant sell-on clause involved in that deal as well. So we could get even more money for following Balogun. So it's certainly worth considering. Um, Darren says, do you think English referees are heavily protected just one game weekend for them to go on a strike for the most viewed league in the world to feel the impact? They are, without a doubt, very protected. And they, I think they should face more questions. I think they should come out after games and have to answer questions about the game. I think that's a way forwards for referees, but I doubt that that will happen. Um, Vivian says, does Europe have the same amount of controversy regarding referees as we do? In short, some countries do. Yes, a lot. You know, Spain in particular has faced a lot of backlash for the quality of their officiating. We've seen in European competitions, we've seen in Champions League, we've seen it in the Europa League, the refereeing is a, a global issue and that the standards are not necessarily being upheld to the highest standard they could be but there are some very good examples of referees out there that are doing a consistently good job uh, Darren says we talk about Jorginho going to Barcelona and Partey's unknown status would Joshua Kimmich be an ideal target uh, I assume by unknown status we're talking about kind of about the the fact that he's got I think a year left on his deal come the end of this season his injuries uh, and what's going on there is is really frustrating to see him continually missing out on games but would be going for a player like Joshua Kimmich be an ideal target or should Arsenal go for a younger profile I think Joshua Kimmich is obviously of an older age profile and I think that Arsenal would be more inclined to look at a younger profile of player but certainly if a player of that level is available we could decide to move for them what I would say is that there are always risks I mean you look at Liverpool going for Thiago Alcantara for instance think about how many minutes he's been able to play as he's gone into the latter stages of his career injuries are more damaging they last longer it's very difficult to see uh, if Joshua Kimmich would even leave Bayern Munich. But uh, I think Arsenal should be looking to try and replace Partey in the next year or two because obviously those injuries just keep coming back to buy Arsenal, sadly. Um, jo, let's scroll up a little bit because I think I know I missed some other questions a little bit earlier in the chat box. Uh, scroll up a little bit more. Uh, Tutor says, hey, Tom, what software do you think is good to do a live show on YouTube for online tutoring? Online tutoring. Um, I use StreamYard because it's the most accessible and it's the easiest to use and it's very easy to use, like it's very comfortable to use. So I'd recommend that in terms of just accessibility, but it's not without its issues. Like, you know, I think it depends on kind of the, the size of your audience. I think that the bigger the audience you get, StreamYard starts to struggle a bit more, as we have sadly found out. But um I don't, OBS, I suppose, OBS Studios you can look into, but it's not really necessarily a streaming in the same way. Look into it. Um, and, and YouTube, you know, search on YouTube for the best streaming platforms for things like that. Uh, Phil says, do you think we can rotate our back line more to give Saliba and Gabriel some rest? Surely Kivio can get some game time, or do you think our matches have been too tightly contested thus far? I do think to a degree that they have, yes. Kivio hasn't got as many minutes as I'd maybe hoped that he might. Tommy Asu, I think he's more likely to, to rotate in and out of those centre-back positions and for good reason. He's done very well playing in those centre-back positions. I don't think I'd use Tommy Asu in the right-back role. I think I'd rather see somebody else use there. But um, yeah, I, I think that we can see um, them rotated and protected a little bit more than perhaps they have been so far. Um, Parvez says, why don't we sign Boateng for at least one season? He's without a club and he can cover Saliba and White for that right-sided centre-back. It'll also bring more experience. Not for me. Jerome Boateng is, is well past his best and has been riddled with errors in his game and actually was very close to signing for Bayern Munich as well, except their fans protested against the idea so heavily that the club turned around and told Jerome Boateng that effectively they weren't going to sign him. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally be going for, um, for, 
uh, Jerome Boateng at this stage. I don't think we need to either, to be honest. Um, Jason says, would you offer Gabriel Jesus plus cash to land 150 million pound rated Aussie men? How much cash uh, is the question? Aussie men is certainly without a doubt, you know, a better number nine than Gabriel Jesus is. My idea for the striker position, though, is to not replace Jesus. It's to replace uh, Enketia with Jesus and then Jesus gets kind of upgraded upon. I think Jesus needs to stay at Arsenal for the longest period of time possible because he's an asset to this team. But we should be looking to bring in greater competition for his position than we currently have. And I'd be looking to sell Enketia and move in a player that's going to oust Jesus from the squad. Um, Josh says, hi, Tom, a great question. Will you have a merch mug with Man City tears written on it and also any news on Noosa, uh, the wonder kid? No news on Noosa, really. It's do it continue to do well um, uh, in Belgium, I believe, and uh, for the Norwegian national side. But regarding merch, you know, we've had a pause on merch for the, uh, the last little bit. Uh, hopefully it comes back at some stage. We're working on maybe... Uh, coming up with a plan for that, but uh, nothing at the moment uh, regarding merch, I'm afraid. Uh, Fuad says, Tom, what was the reason they didn't want to implement the semi-automatic offsides? Surely this is great for them as it takes less work off their plate. Uh, this is actually a really big misconception. Premier League clubs actually voted against the idea of bringing in semi-automatic offsides. So for those that have been pointing their fingers at referees and PGMOL, you need to take a step back because actually it was the Premier League clubs that voted against the idea of bringing in that semi-auto offside. I think it's a great idea. I think it's the way forwards, personally. And hopefully the infrastructures at clubs allow them to then vote in favour of bringing in. But I think it was a lot of money to spend on you know upgrading the stadiums. And I think it would have been the right decision to do so. Hopefully that changes. But yeah, there's no point pointing fingers at the referees and PGMOL for the semi-auto offsides because that was a Premier League club decision not the the pgmol um parvez says we need to cover uh someone somebody for center mid why don't we go for adrian rabio uh, i'm sure he will be cheap as he is one of the last seasons on his contract at juventus imagine the depth and then we can go for a strong player like Neto. it depends on the fee of course for an, a rabio rabio has been a player that's been linked to arsenal with what feels like forever i think we've been doing transfer stories on this channel for the good last you know eight years and I feel like we've been talking about um Rabio uh for that huge length of time and he's never really been able to reach kind of the real high heights and yet saying that he has won World Cups and he's won big tournaments and he's won trophies and he's always continued to start for teams like France and uh teams like Juventus and PSG before that so he must have a level of quality that is appreciated and you know, I think that maybe if you played him in that left centre mid, left eight position, maybe he would succeed to a degree. But there's always been something holding me back against the idea of signing someone like Rabio. I think there is obviously there are, uh, there's an issues off the fields that have been discussed at length. But I don't know how present day they are. I know that they're quite historic, but I don't know how present day. It's always been talked about when he was like an early 20s player, but I don't think I've heard much about it since he's reached his mid to late 20s, personally. Uh, Moses says, hey, Tom, I think I found Kai Havertz's role. He can play on the right and at striker because he can afford us to go forwards and get good backup to Bakaya Saka or even Pedro Neto. I think that for me, right wing is not where I would play Havertz, but certainly I would agree with you at centre forward. I'd like to see Kai Havertz given the opportunity to play in a centre forward position more. Coming off the bench to play in that role proved very differential against Man City and it proved to be a really big impact for us there. So certainly that's worth pointing to. Uh, Zed Tom says, uh, Rabio has matured well and is doing very well at Juventus. It would depend upon the price. And this is what I think it's worth pointing to. I think people conflate the issues of his past into present day. And actually, if you give the player the benefit of the doubt and you do a little bit more research into it, you might find that there's not been off-field issues for Adrian and Rabio for quite some time. But it's certainly maybe worth looking into it a little bit more. Um, let's go to um, boom, boom, boom. Johan says if Jorginho leaves in January who would you sign as his replacement are there any gettable midfielders that you have your eyes on the, the player that I continue to bring up always is Yusuf Afana. Uh Yusuf Afana at Monaco is the player that I would go for it would cost about 30 to 40 million pounds to get the player through the door and if you're going to invest uh, in that position I think that's a great amount of money to sign a player for in this current climate you know of, of what midfielders are worth so for me it would be Yusuf Fafana. 
Uh, and Jameson says, what about Quentin Timber? He would add to the mid midfield depth. Uh, doing really, really well at final. It is uh, Yuri and Timber's brother, Quentin. Um, is it time to bring the brothers to the club? We talked about this a little, a few days ago, a week ago. Talked about Sven and Lars Bender, of course, and the Bayer Leverkusen twins. But maybe we should be bringing in the Timber twins to Arsenal. Um, Tyson says, what do you think of the Jesus Elzimen swap rumours? I think they're a lot of rubbish, to be honest, Tyson. I don't see any truth in those whatsoever. Um, the Croc 14 says, uh, it's been said there's a better system than the semi-auto offsides being developed, hence the reluctance to implement them now, which makes sense. If there is a better system that's available, why invest all the money now into the system that it could be outdated very quickly? And I think I did read a story, actually, the Croc, um, about that. So you're you're absolutely spot on um, in highlighting that fact. I think there was indeed suggestions that the clubs felt that why invest in something that's going to be outdated very, very quickly. Uh, Arsenal Adventures, Tom, can you take a look at Gabriel Mascardo? Um, he'll be a future for Patino Rice and Odegaard in the midfield. Uh I know of him. I think he plays in South America. Um, but I can't say that. And I think he was linked quite heavily with Chelsea in the summer as well. But nothing happened. I think they may have even had a bid rejected for him. But I can't say I know much about him at all. Um, other than the fact he's a centre mid. So I can't necessarily comment too heavily and opinionatedly on it. Um, Hamish says, Jesus said he was pushed by Edison and another foul Oliver missed. Can fans do anything to stop Oliver officiating another Arsenal match? He has obviously something against the Arsenal fan base. It's ironic because actually Michael Oliver has refereed some really good games for Arsenal and actually he's been very good for us. And our record when he referees games is very positive. I think it's easy to get you know caught up in the the hysteria sometimes of, of individual moments and we think back to that game against Wolves where he gave Martinelli a red card but actual Michael Ova is is one of the best referees in the country alongside Anthony Taylor we may not like to admit it because obviously of the mistake that happened against City but he is one of the better referees and we actually have a really good record in terms of wins when he referees games so I wouldn't necessarily rule it out the idea of him refereeing us moving forwards. Trevor says, how about re-signing Peeny Ween? He hasn't been at the club for the moment. Peeny Ween's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm very well informed. The Guna Talk understands that Peeny Ween is, is okay. Um, and I heard some good things about him the other day. He's just taking a bit of a break at the moment, which I think is absolutely admirable. Uh, sometimes you just need to focus on yourself. I certainly have, have needed to do that for quite some time. Uh, ben says, Tom, if you could choose between winning the Premier League and the Champions League, which one would you pick? Uh, the Premier League. Uh, I always look to the Premier League as the harder competition and the more prestigious competition to win. I know a lot of people would choose the Champions League because we don't have one of them. But I think for me, it's really important that Arsenal win a Premier League title very soon. And the Champions League could come hand in hand with that success. So personally, um, you know, I, I'd choose the, I'd, I'd choose that Premier League title. So that would be my view um let's go to lucas says martinelli's double yellow card against wolves tommy Asu's yellow for the throw-ins kovacic missed yellows three high profile mistakes can't give him flowers for this i'm not giving him flowers for that you know he's made mistakes um but what i would say lucas is that he still has been one of the better referees for us and that's just the fact you know um he has been one of the better referees to referee our games so they're not they're all they all make mistakes you're never going to find a referee of a perfect record when refereeing Arsenal. You think about how bad Paul Tierney, for instance, has been for Arsenal. Um, but Michael Oliver has got a very good record of refereeing Arsenal games. We focus on the mistakes more, but uh, he has refereed some very good games. Uh, Derek says, Tommy, are you going to Chelsea? I've got my ticket. It could be a real banana skin, that one. Um, I'm not, because obviously, being a London game, uh, our Chelsea writer will be going to that one in my place. Uh, next game we're going to is the Sheffield United game and then the Newcastle away game as well. So uh, I will not be at Chelsea. Uh, I'm actually kind of, I don't know why, I'm looking forward to watching a game from home for once, which sounds strange, but I've been so, I feel like there's a level of burnout related to going to like games home and away, week in, week out, midweek as well, going to France, coming back, going to a game at the weekend, coming back, going to a midweek away game. You know, it is, it's a lot of travelling, you know, I don't take it for granted because I'm very lucky to be able to do it. But I'm I'm quite looking forward to just covering a game from home next week 
and just being able to chill and watch the game and cover the uh, the game from home in some ways. So, yeah, I, I am thankful in some ways to be getting a little bit of a break. But I'm working, Abby, so I will not be able to do a, a watch along because I will still be working. Um, so there you go. And Kevin says, when you watch from home, you can be more of a fan. I can. You're right. I can be a little bit more animated. I can be a little bit louder. That said, when that Man City goal was scored against Man City, I was kind of in a position where, because I was in the overflow section of the press locks, I had a uh, laptop was on my lap rather than on a desk because there's no desk in the overflow. And I had to kind of like, I had my laptop in one hand here and my hand, my right hand was pumping the air with celebration. It was difficult to celebrate, but uh, you do get caught up a little bit more when you're sitting in the overflow because you're around the fans a lot more than you are in the uh, the press box. Uh, Colleen says, uh, Tom, you should visit the Boston Gooners. Uh, I, again, I'd love to keep visiting different um, supporter groups. I do really want to go back to Chicago as well, but uh, it certainly is a wish list to continue visiting different Arsenal supporters clubs around the world. Definitely something I want to try and do. Seb says, have you seen the Tony rumours and what is your opinion? Uh, I mean, no, I don't I don't even know he's ever been linked to. Has he been linked to Arsenal, Ivan Tony? I'm not sure that he has, has he? I don't think Arsenal have been mentioned as a player that um, has been linked. That's completely, completely new to me. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, obviously we have. I think we've discussed Ivan Tony at length. Uh, people know my views on it. Um, and uh, we talked about it a little bit yesterday as well. Um, Tyler says, hey, Tom, would you rather Arsenal's 20 years in the Champions League or would you rather we got Europa League during that period, as I believe with the team we would have won a few of them? No, I'd rather play in the Champions League um, and have the opportunity to try and win the Champions League. So that is very, very, very easy. Seb says, I'm sorry, I've been away. <laughs> it's fair enough, Seb. No worries, man. Um, and yeah, I love I love Ivan Tony Green Yeah, he's, uh, he's my favourite player. <laughs> uh, Arsenal Venture says, many want Tony. Do you think that Arteta wants Tony? I think that the club have got an interest in him. I think the interest is is there and they've monitored him. I think it's been blown a bit out of proportion. I think it's it's been made to be more than it actually is, but the club certainly have an interest in the player. Um, so says, Tom, he's not a good referee. I assume that means Michael Oliver. And he always makes controversial calls in games, not just Arsenal's. The best refs are the ones that don't make the papers. Well, Name me one. <laughs> Name me one referee that has not been in the papers or not been in the spotlight because they are all in the spotlight. They are all in a position where they are getting um, attention. So whilst I agree with you in the sense of the better referees with the ones that we don't talk about, they are all in the spotlight. The ones that are less talked about, the new ones that are coming into the league at the moment. But trust me, I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if very soon that they are also starting to be talked about at great length as well. Right, let's uh let's let's finish the show there. Thank you so much guys for tuning in. Very much appreciate your time. I hope that you've had a fantastic day and week and uh it's quite good that Val has actually asked this question of hey Tom is the Strava group still going? It very much is. Uh yes, the Strava group is still a thing. You can go to www strava.com forward slash clubs forward slash e-s-a-r-p to join our strava group and tonight hopefully we will be recording a live episode of the eat sleep arsenal repeat podcast so i can give you another update on the strava side of things uh, i hit another weekly low uh, record low regarding my weight on monday very happy i've lost about 10 kilos now since i started this weight loss journey which has um, been going very well and yet I've still been able to enjoy myself and still been able to eat things that I want to eat so progress over perfection has certainly been the motto of this and uh, a continual progress has been achieved so far so that's really really positive but yeah we should have an eat sleep arsenal repeat podcast for you hopefully uh, with the doc and and hopefully Owen and hopefully Sophie tonight so make sure you uh, set your alarms it'll either be about eight about eight o'clock I think will probably be when we do it so, yeah, make sure you keep an eye on that. But thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Really appreciate your time, as always. Do drop a like, subscribe, all that lovely stuff. And uh, I'll see you this evening. Have a great day. And as always, up the Arsenal.